Welcome to Art Stars Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available, or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explores. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on, or has writing on the back, or is ripped, and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself, or crumpling it, or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time, because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're gonna take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I am the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. This week we're going to continue our exploration of alphabets. And you can see here on this sticky that I have written out the Latin alphabet A, B, C, ending with Z because this is the alphabet that I'm going to use while I explore with you this week. There are lots of different kinds of alphabets, but this is the alphabet that I'm the most familiar with because I read and write in English. So I'm gonna use this alphabet, but you might know a whole bunch of different alphabets and you can bring in as many different alphabets as you know or are practicing while we explore and play today. For this week's exploration of alphabets, I've grabbed a couple of different things. Do you have any mark making tools? I pulled out my markers, but you could use pencils, pencil crayons, crayons, even lipstick if you had permission. Anything that marks up the page is a mark making tool. We'll also need some paper. I went into my recycling bin and grabbed some paper. There's some printing on it. Some of these papers are kind of messy and have holes in them. They're kind of different colors. It doesn't really matter what I pull out of the recycling bin because everything that we make today is not for keeps. We're just trying things out. And when I'm all done playing and exploring, I'm gonna put these pieces of paper back in the recycling bin. For this week's exploration, I thought what we could do is we could explore something called acrostics. This kind of odd word that we don't use very often is a kind of poetry. And what it is, is it's what happens when you take a word, so for example, like my name, K-A-Y, and you write it, um, vertically on the page, which gives you uh, the space, especially if you're writing in English, left to right, to expand on each one of the letters you've written down. I encourage you while we explore this warm up and explore acrostics, that you either use your name or you use a word that is associated with something that you know a lot about. So, it could be the name of your pet, or it could be the name of your favorite food, or it could be the name of your favorite character from a book, or a play, or a film. Something that you know, at least a couple of pieces of information about are going to be important, and I'll show you why. So to start with, I, start, I got this piece of paper ready, and you know what? I'm going to move some of my things to the side so we have a bit more room to explore, at least in my space. There's my alphabet. I'm going to keep this word acrostics here so you can check out the spelling and know what we're exploring. So before I got started, I wrote down my name like this, but you could put any word honestly, in whichever direction you wanted. Why couldn't I put my name? K, A, Y. Or put my name K, A, Y. Let's see, let's see what happens. Okay, so I haven't really answered what is an acrostic yet? So you can see this format that I laid out and I put my name, which is spelled K-A-Y, and I put it into these three boxes here and I put it um, vertical. What happens in the space to the side of each of these letters? Well, we've got this ability, especially when I put lines around it, to really focus on just one letter. 
not really thinking about the A or Y, I can just think about what K, the letter K, means. And I'm thinking about it in association or related to or connected to or um, that makes me think of an idea that's like the, that's connected to the letter K. So what's an example? So I know me. I'm familiar with who I am. So I'm going to take the color red and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go K is for ketchup. Chips. I'm going to put a heart here. If you wrote your name, what is connected to you that also shares the letter, oh, so the first letter of your name? Can you fill in the space beside your first letter? If you're all done, we could go to the next letter. Or if you laid out your page like me where there's all these spaces, there's no reason why we couldn't go to the last letter or another letter in the word. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to answer my why because thinking about that, a word came to mind right away, which is yellow. That's kind of hard to see. I'm going to change this again and I'm going to go yellow plus Oh, and I already have my red out. Red equals my favorite color. I reached the end of my page, so I wrote my favorite color, which is takes up a lot of space, to fill up this whole space. And it's easy for me to know that it's still associated with my letter Y because I made these lines here. But what would have happened if I hadn't put these lines here? Would it still be connected with this letter? Maybe because of this format, I need this box to make it clear. I could also add it after the fact. But this is just one way we can fill out an acrostic. Okay, I have one more area here. A. A, 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 A. What is connected with my name that starts with A? You know what? I have two things that I like on the top and the bottom. I love ketchup chips with my heart here. I've got my favorite here. This time, I'm going to go apples are just okay because I'm okay with apples they're not my favorite fruit I'll eat them if they're around but that's me this is a truth about me so not just by right sorry uh, beyond just writing my name and me being on the page, now you would get to know a little bit about me by following um, and exploring this kind of poetry. And it's pretty fun with your name, right? You get to figure out all the different words that are in common or are associated with the letters in your name. This could be a really fun game to play with a new friend or a new classmate or a babysitter or caregiver. Somebody who you've just met, you could both do an acrostic of your name to get to know each other. Do I have to fill the spaces besides my letters with other letters? What would happen if I was to do this again? And I'm going to do the same setup where I do this kind of grid. And for me, it's really easy because I just have three letters in my name. But if you're practicing along with me and your name has lots of letters, you might still be working on coming up with sentences and words that are associated with your name. And that's cool. You can continue that. 
but I'm going to do a different version. I'm going to do an equivalent of what I wrote here with the, uh, with the letters. And now I'm going to go, all right, K. Well, how is this connected to me? Mm. So I could draw the ketchup chips. Maybe I'll draw a bag. This looks a little clearer. Draw a little tomato on the bag so it's a little bit clearer that it's ketchup chips. There we go. And I can fill this whole area. Maybe I really love ketchup chips. And uh, I just want this whole space to be nothing but ketchup chips. I do that. Maybe there's another uh, word that's connected with K that means something to me. a lot of ketchup chips. Yum. Maybe I'll put some dots here as well for the seasoning and spice that are on the, uh, on the ketchup chips. Um, but what's another K word that is associated with me? I could choose kite, but I don't know. I don't fly kites. And I could draw a kangaroo, but I've never seen a kangaroo. And I, don't, I mean, I don't mind kangaroos, but they're not really connected to me. But you know what else I really like that starts with a K is little baby kittens. And so I could draw a whole bunch of kittens. in this space. Get kind of hard using a marker. <laughs> Maybe if I did this again, I'd do it in pencil instead. Lots and lots of kitties, or specifically kittens, because I'm using the letter K. Fill up the space with little kitties. I don't have to just do it in this direction because I'm filling up the space. Turn my page. Maybe I'll do a couple little paws. There we go. It still has to do with the letter K, right? Because both of those words I chose were associated uh, with this letter because they both start with the letter K as well, but it's still connected to me because they're things that I like. So let's move on to A for me or on to the next letter or area uh, for you and your name. But let's take a couple of minutes and just quickly draw a couple of things and then we can come back and talk about them when we're all done. And if you don't have any ideas, you can just watch me draw um, as I go along.
Okay. What did you put in the spaces besides each of the letters for your name or the word that you picked? I filled out my top one with ketchup and kittens. I used the math symbol less than greater than to put a asparagus over here on the right and apples over here showing that I like asparagus greater than I like apples. And down here I used yellow with some red to create my favorite color orange to make a yellow polka dotted pattern that I really liked as if it was made from some yellow yarn because I really like working in textiles and knitting and crocheting. So there's a little bit of a story, like a comic book, about who I am on each of these lines that happen based on my name. And both of these acrostics or poetry are just, just as right. Just because I use writing on this one and just because I use drawing on this one doesn't mean that they're any less associated with me or my name or that they're not connected to the letters K-A-Y. They are associated. They both are extensions of me. They're equivalents. Do you remember before I said that what would happen if instead of doing um, my acrostic with it K-A-Y on the vertical, that instead I had written it with K-A-Y at the bottom or K-A-Y at the top. What happens here? Can I still make an acrostic? I'm gonna put this to the side, yeah, put this over here. Can I still make an acrostic where my letters are over here or my letters are down at the bottom? Well, I find that making this grid is really helpful in organizing my space, especially because altogether my name, I could like draw or I could write associated with the whole word, but I want to focus on each one of the letters. I want them to be their own ideas. And so maybe I'll make the, the lines a little thicker between each to really show that each one of these letters while they might go in order to form my name, they are separate ideas. There we go. Okay, what's different? What changes? Here, I'll bring these back up again, my sentence. And when I have the letters up at the top of the page, rather than um, up and down on the vertical, what happens? What's different? Can I still write sentences here? Can you still write sentences here? I'm writing in English, and so it might feel a little weird for me to go from top to bottom, but there are um, alphabets and languages that are totally written uh, rather than left to right or right to left that are instead written um, top to bottom. And so, there's no reason why if I was using those alphabets that this wouldn't be a more intuitive or normal or correct um, way of doing an acrostic, right? It's just normal to read from top to bottom. But if we were going to continue to think in English, what could I do in these spaces? Could I repeat this? Could I just do the same thing? I take my picture. Oh, nope. It doesn't work this way because my Y was over here, my K was over here. What if I go this way? Yep, that works. So I could draw these long strips of ideas, and maybe, maybe you still have to read them like this. Maybe you have to look on the side, but I could have turned my pictures this way, drawn them like that. Maybe I could use this idea of reading from top to bottom. And here, if I picked the same pictures as before, I could go, well, if it's closer to my letters, things that I really like, I'm gonna put up at the top. 
Oh, there's my weird cat. It kind of looks like a bunny. <laughs> I mean, my kitten. There we go. I could put that. And then I could put my ketchup chips. And maybe this time I'm eating the ones that are in the tubes. And I could color it in with my ketchup chips. There you go. Um, but then maybe, you know, remember I said I'm not really a huge fan of kites, but I like them. They're okay. So I could put kites down here. Maybe I put a plus up here and I put a minus down here. Or maybe I put a heart up here and I put an X down here. Or maybe I don't put any symbols here. Maybe I try out different things. But I could make a list because this kind of looks like a list, doesn't it? I have all these different things that I like. So remember I had asparagus. Kind of a weird looking asparagus. Kind of looks like celery, especially without the green. There you go. And then down here, maybe I put apples. And then uh, up here, actually I'm just going to put my yarn this time up here. There we go. And then maybe down here I put a yak, oh, which I don't think I've ever drawn before. What do yaks look like? Eh, I can check later. This is just for keep or not for keeps. Kind of looks like a cow, but it needs to have some big hair. There we go. There's my yak down at the bottom. And I could keep going. I could keep drawing a whole bunch of things um, in here. What about when I put my letters at the bottom of the page. What happens here? I'm going to do the same thing as before, but instead of putting a line between, I'm just going to divide up my page so I can focus on each letter. What do you notice? What's different about putting it at the bottom of the page compared to the top page? I could do this again, where I could just draw in this area that's connected so that um, if I think about reading from top to bottom, maybe I'll see the pictures first because before I go down and I notice um, the letters at the bottom. But what else happens? What else do you notice when the letters are at the bottom of the page? Well, because they're at the bottom, I get to start um, thinking of words that actually end in these letters. And so all of a sudden, words like quick, trick, brick, I can use in this space. I think quick is probably the most associated with me. And so I'm going to use the purple again and go Q, U, I, C, K. And um, my nibblings, nieces, and nephews sometimes call me Tita. And there's no reason why I couldn't repeat my name again now that I'm at the end. K-A-Y. So I used my name twice. That's all right. You get to read it left to right and read it up to down. It makes it really clear and obvious that the focus is me here because uh, it's a little bit harder when it's at the, the end of the, of the word. Um, but there's no reason why I couldn't repeat my, uh, my name. In fact, does it have to all be in one line? Could I go, I'm going to choose another piece of paper and go K A Y and then go K A Y and go K A Y K A Y. Oh my goodness. Look at them. Look at them all. Keep going. K again here. Where else could I, could I have it? Oh, there. 
right? And so is this still an acrostic? I mean, there's my name. What happens if we were going to do it like this? What happens to the areas around it? What if we started doing this and had K, is it? K, so K A Y, there's my name again. And then put a grid around it like this. And now do associations with the letters in the adjacent or neighboring or besides areas. So maybe these ones, and I'm going to choose different colors, but maybe these ones all have to do with A, and these ones have to do with K, and these ones have to do with A. But if I was going to follow this and I put K, A, Y here, then I could keep going. I could add another section here. Um, and then all of a sudden, maybe the, this section is blue that's associated with this K. Oh, and now this blue and this red comes together over here. So now I get to pick things that are associated with blue and green and blue and red in these squares, and then this one's blue, so I could do a color code around my name. There are lots of different ways that I could explore using my name as the start of, um, of an acrostic. It's just about um, using these letters as an association with a sentence or a picture or an idea. I got really excited as we went along, and I think I could probably come up with lots more ways to use my name um, to make associations, make sentences, make pictures. Did you come up with some ideas that I didn't think of? I'm going to leave my camera running while I clean up my space so that I can get ready for uh, other weeks because I always like to practice respect when I am making along with you for Explorers. If you enjoyed today's session and you followed along with me in previous weeks and you came up with an idea or something you wanna share with us, we'd love to see it. You could send us a message with permission from an adult or guardian uh, by emailing us or posting your stuff on social media. If you really enjoyed this week and you missed the previous weeks where we explored alphabets, you can check out the recordings of those workshops on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, which is uh, facebook.com slash artstarts or youtube.com slash artstarts. Or you can visit our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online. Okay, I'm going to start cleaning up and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye for now.